Welcome everybody to the uh, September meeting of the Commission on Aging Well. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And our first uh, uh, item is to approve the minutes. Jill has sent those out to everybody for review. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. <clears throat> Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Minutes are approved. I do not see anybody for public uh, appearances, um, so we will move on to our agenda items. Uh, first agenda item would be the mission vision statement. All right, I'm going to pull it up here on the screen so everybody can see it if you don't have a copy in front of you. So um, a group um, consisting of uh, Barb here at the commission, Ruth, and Linda, and then um, a member of the Friends Committee have been meeting um, informally for a few weeks um, to work on revitalizing our mission statement um, and then creating a vision statement. Um, and then we did have to make this more of a formal meeting to make sure, even though we had three commission members, um, it's called a negative quorum, so we'll be posting um, our meetings here on out um, that will continue to work on um, incorporating the mission statement and the vision statement into a new plan for growth. So um, the meeting that we met at last week, I think it was, um, was notified. We, we sent out a notification to the public about this, so we'll continue to do that. Um, but with the help of this group, um, we have moved forward with updating our mission statement, and so I wanted to bring it before the Commission on Aging um, for um, your blessing and approval that we can adopt this new mission and vision statement and then again use it to move forward with updating our plan for growth. Um, so um, the new mission statement, as you can see, the mission of the Fitchburg Senior Center is to advance healthy aging for vibrant as well as vulnerable populations through diverse social and recreational opportunities and supportive services. This is a lot more succinct and uh, it just really captures um, what we do in a shorter way. Um, as you can see below that, the, the old one was kind of lengthy, a lot of words, um, and just kind of, I think, droned on and on. So it really just pulled all of that together. Um, and so that is our proposed mission statement. We've never had a vision statement. Um, got a lot of guidance from this group. And so, um, and Linda chime in because I was a little, you know, I get a little mixed up between what's really a mission statement and what's a vision statement. So Linda um, has a lot of experience so she can kind of chime in and explain how she kind of directed our group with this. Okay, mission statement is what an organization is all about. It's why you exist. It's why the employees get up in the morning and go to work. It's an explanation of, of permanence. The vision statement is a, like any vision, it's a dream, it's a goal. It's what you want to become. Many vision statements are aspirational. They may or may not ever be accomplished, but the, the vision statement says this is where we want to go into the future. And though, so by looking at the mission and the vision simultaneously as part of the plan for growth, it enables us to say this is where we're starting from, these are the, the core values we want to maintain but there are some areas where we'd like to, to become stronger. And so once we look at that, the set of, of goals for the future, that helps in, in, in setting some, some initiatives in the plan for growth. Wonderfully said. So, so saying that, um, that gave us a little direction and we came up with the vision statement. Um, the vision of the Fitchburg Senior Center is to become the recognized leader in building connections and opportunities to reimagine aging and empower individuals to be their best selves. So these are um, the two statements we're putting forward today to the Commission on Aging to see um, if you are comfortable with these um, statements, if you um, have any comments or suggestions. Um, so I open it up for any questions. Hey, Jill, um, I just had one comment, you know, as I read through it last night, uh, the mission statement. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, the change to through diverse social, common recreational 
um, and volunteer opportunities and supportive services. I think, you know, our our, our seniors in our um, in our city have, you know have a unique unique opportunity to to shape our city and you know, create you know not just you know they're retired they have maybe maybe more time uh, there and uh, you know as I'm approaching that so I I'd like it in there the, you know, the volunteer portion of it also. Um, I'm I'm open. I'm I'm just throwing that out to the to the committee. Um, I can comment on that. I don't disagree with you, Dave. I think um, you know if it wasn't for the volunteers that that are serving right here today and on this committee, and for you know the pretty much 125 regular volunteers we have volunteering, um, we wouldn't even have a program. So um, I I would support that addition. Anybody else? I agree. All right, we'll add that to it. Um, I did talk to the city attorney. I don't, I don't know if this has to be a formal approval um, or not. You know, it doesn't involve any money. It doesn't involve anything. So I'll work. I, I don't know, Dave, if you know, but, um, you know, if we can just add that and then just all agree that that's where we should um, move forward. But, um, you know, the group knows there's no time frame affiliated with this. We are taking our time. And so if I need to bring it back for a more fo formal approval next month, I'll do that. If not, um, we will just incorporate that. I'll send it out to everybody just so you're aware. Um, but it wouldn't be a vote or anything like that. So I'll keep you posted. Okay. Any other discussion or comments? Um, I like the, the vibrant as well as the vulnerable in the, in the statement. Um, I, I'm I, verbally it just seems where I'm concerned that we're missing the middle ball. Um, you know, everybody isn't a vibrant uh, senior um, and everybody isn't a, a, a vulnerable senior. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's, Barbara, you're really good at tweaking these things. Um, if there's a way of somehow including the um, almost like the couch potatoes, um, the, the middle of the road type people. Um, uh, I don't know, but I'm, I'm very pleased with what, what you come up with, so. Uh. Anybody have comments? Well, I would just um, suggest that vibrant doesn't mean, you know, uh, extremely physically active. The intent of using vibrant was, you know, peop was to distinguish between um, that perception that the senior center is available and provides services only for the uh, extremely aged, you know, 80 plus versus the 50 plus. So, sort of the range of uh, age and um, interests and abilities is, uh, I think, what was intended to be implied by vibrant. Okay, anything further on this? No, I just, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll take that into consideration, but I, I'm gonna have to echo Barb. I think, um, you know, when we talked about updating this mission statement, it was, there was a lot behind it by trying to, um, get rid of the myths of, you know, senior centers are just for old people. You know, we're, we're for, you know, any, everybody. And I understand what you're saying, but to add another one, um, just my thoughts are this, you know, we could say everywhere in between, but I feel like that's kind of, you know, we wouldn't be like, um, are you vibrant? Are you vulnerable? So no, <laughs> you know, and how do you define vibrant? I would hope everybody who's aging wants to say, I want to be vibrant and maybe I'm not, but if I go to the senior center, I will become that way. So, um, anyway, just some of the, the reasoning behind, you know, we thought a lot about this and, um, so we want to imply that, um, without really stating it, but, but again, this is a process. This is the first time, you know, you guys are seeing it. So we, we meet monthly and we will, if we decide we come up with something different, We'll definitely do that. So, yeah, and, and I agree. I I really like the vibrant part portion of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Then, so I just wanted to just quickly, and then what we're going to do next is, as we you know, um, definitely all agree upon something, 
we worked on where, where do we go next. And what we decided is that AARP puts out, um, and you might see this in other places, domains of wellness. And so we're going to use these domains of wellness to then create our next steps, our plan for growth. And these domains include, and we're, it doesn't mean we will include all of them, but it's kind of our guidelines right now. Um, we looked at outdoor spaces and buildings, transportation, housing, social participation, respect and social inclusion, civic participation, employment and employment, communication and information, community and health services. So this just gives us this template to grow from um, and, and you know, start the brainstorming from that. And then we're gonna look at a format that uh, Linda had brought forward from uh, the program that the women's group sponsored um, with the talking trash and the recycling, um, looking at old paradigms and new paradigms. The old, you know, what, what do people used to think? What did this used to mean when you said senior center? But what does that mean now? So I feel like we have a really great framework to move forward from. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. And again, these meetings are going to be, they're open to the public. This is just the core group meeting, so they'll be posted. And if you ever want to just come on over and sit in or whatever, um, you are welcome to do so. So um, as I said, moving forward, um, we'll meet again, kind of talk about the, some of these suggestions and, and just keep fine tuning it. A couple of additional comments. When we're looking, I, I said the, the vision statement is that long-term strategic set of strategic goals or initiatives that your dream for the future. So if we look at uh, the, the goal of becoming the recognized leader, when you look at, parse these words out, you say, all right, what does it mean to be a recognized leader and how do we make that happen? Uh, to build connections, what does it mean to build connections and how do we go about doing it? So we can, we can look at all of these components of the vision and say, how can we build that into the process that Jill's been talking about so that we have a plan for growth that is moving us toward a defined destination goal. I think that's it. Thanks, Linda. Okay. We'll move on to uh, the report from the Senior Center Friends. I think Marsha is Zooming, are you not, Marsha? Yes, I am today. Thanks. Okay. Um, Okay, the Friends Board meeting membership year ends with September. And so we say goodbye and thank you to Lee Island Felt, Sharon Trimborn, Judith Hirsch, Sandra Ermis, and Nan Hoffman. Um, a, slate of six, a, a slate of six new board members was presented at the last meeting and um, pro approved. The travel committee held its travel show in late August, which was well attended. And there are four tours uh, being promoted for 2022. Co Costa Rica in February, Michigan in May, uh, Colorado trains in July and the national parks in September. A member of the board is planning a day trip to Appleton uh, for a program called Christmas stars on Saturday, December 4th. The cost will cover uh, bus rental, lunch, and the performance. It's not really a fundraiser. We hope to break even on it. Uh, there will be 50 tickets available and that's it. Um, the Friends has been working on an updated brochure and we hope to have that uh, completed and printed before the end of the uh, year 2021. As far as money that we spent this month, it amounted to about $245, of which only $32 was for special needs. The other expenses were for advertising the travel show and uh, also advertising the September restaurant events, newspapers, et cetera. Um, last night, there, uh, me and Julio's restaurant was the featured restaurant this week. And um, so hopefully a few people went over for dinner or carried out, which I did. And, um, you know, just mention the Fitchburg Senior Center friends or the friends or Senior Center or anything, anything along those lines. There are three more of those events 
Uh, next week on Wednesday, it'll be Benvenuto's. Uh, the week after, it's several days at um, Funk's Pub. And then the last Wednesday of the month is Hop House. So if you're looking for something to do a Wednesday evening, I hope you'll, or afternoon, it could be. That's the extent of my uh, report. Okay, any questions for the friends group? Okay, let's move on to the director's report then, Jill. Okay, so um, as, as Marcia had mentioned, the Friends, um, they usually do a big event for National Senior Center Month. Um, you know, again, with COVID, we are just looking at things differently. So thank you to the Friends for organizing all of these restaurants. Um, there was five Wednesdays in um, September. So every single Wednesday, you can go to a different participating restaurant. And then that restaurant has, is going to donate proceeds back to the Friends group. So thank you to the Friends for doing that. And then another um, activity that the Friends are sponsoring. So we at the Senior Center too are not doing anything super huge just because again, you just never know what it's gonna look like when you're planning a month or two ahead. Um, so we just decided um, to do a ice cream, not really a drive by, it's a walk up, but we're gonna have the chocolate shop ice cream truck parked on the upper level of the Fitchburg Senior Center, the drive up. And the friends are sponsoring this. They're paying for all the ice cream. And so folks can just come over for lunch that day. And then um, from 12 to two, they can go outside, grab an ice cream cone or a dish of ice cream. There's 12 flavors to pick from. And um, we have a lot more seating outside now. We have some more patio furniture. Um, if they wanna come back inside and eat or if they just wanna take their ice cream and go, they can do that. So um, thank you to the friends for sponsoring that. There was a minimum um, cost um, to make sure that you know that they would park out there and the friends are covering that cost so um, thank you to the friends for that it is um, September 24th 12 to oh, 12 to 2 is the ice cream so come on over that's the way we celebrate and if it's really nice out we might have a few of our ukulele groups players out there just playing just a little background music so um, so anyway so thank you. Um, let's see, for the Senior Center, um, just kind of moving into fall programs. Um, as I have mentioned before, COVID hasn't really slowed down folks from coming in, um, exercising, um, playing cards, kind of all the normal stuff. So that's really nice to see. Um, uh, September is usually a falls prevention month and we have a stepping on class that is in person. Um, which is full with I think 14 people and seven on a wait list. So we might, we might offer that again. That is an evidence-based program that does help with falls prevention. So, um, and then Linda um, with the Active Women's Group did this, uh, is organizing the second of two series on recycling. And this one is Recycling Myths and Realities on September 28th. And that will feature the city's own civil engineer, um, Claudia Guy and then a gentleman from Pelletier. You, know, you can talk a little bit more about what they're talking about. The, the impetus is to really look at what really does get recycled. So if you throw something into the blue bin, does it really get recycled or does it end up at the landfill? Because sometimes people either recycle things that can't be recycled or they recycle them in the wrong, wrong way. And nationally, about 25% of the things that are recycled end up in the landfill because they haven't been recycled correctly. So we, we kind of challenged Joe the, from uh, Pelletieri, what's the report card for, for, for Fitchburg? So how can we improve the, the process that we use at our curb to decide what goes in the blue bin and what doesn't go in the blue bin so that we can uh, make it uh, more effective for Pelletieri to actually to uh, recycle the materials that we recycle. Thank you. Um, and just, just kind of piggybacking off that, so Linda's part of the active women's group, and just so everybody knows, Jim is in charge of the men's group. So um, again, Dave, it kind of circles back to volunteers leading programs that make us um, be able to do and offer all the things that we do here. So um, as I mentioned, we, we got new patio furniture. We had a set, I think, seating for four. Um, we had some memorial monies directed to us last year, and I talked to the family, and they were fine with us purchasing more patio furniture. 
Um, and so it's all out there. And then next year you might see in the CIP, um, which I had initially proposed um, for 2022, but now pushed back to 23, is that we create even a nicer outdoor seating area um, for folks that can enjoy the outdoors, maybe meet out there in small groups. So now we have seating for eight. Um, and so that was um, thanks to the family of Darlene Weisberger who directed her memorials to the Senior Center. Um, another event that's not in the newsletter, but it is gonna happen is, so Diane Fronick, um, a lot of you know her um, if you've ever taken exercise classes or she sat on the Commission on Aging. She was a meal driver. She's been part of the Senior Center longer than me, so over 30 years, I think close to 35. She has been an aerobics instructor since her kids were little. And, um, and so anyway, during COVID, she felt like it was time to uh, step away from, from teaching exercise classes. So truly, I mean, she's probably one of the longest running city employees, even though it was an independent contractor and then an LTE. Um, so we're going to have a celebration for Diane, a, a sort of a thanks for everything. Thanks for keeping the Fitchburg seniors healthy for 30 plus years. Um, and I, we'll, do some, um, we'll do some promotion online and I'll have flyers. But this is also going to be on Friday, September 24th. And it's gonna be at McKee Park Shelter. So it's gonna be outside. Um, and so after you get your ice cream, you can go down to McKee Park and um, celebrate with Diane and her family from two to five. And so we're really excited to wish her well. Um, she still stops in from, you know, from time to time. Um, so anyway, thank you, Diane, for all your many, many years of service and volunteering. She's an amazing person and uh, she's missed already. Um, so that's going on. And then just a few other things. Um, the countertops are finally being replaced in the kitchen at the end of the month. Um, so we will be closing the kitchen for meals um, up to three days. Um, so we'll be letting our regular people know that. Um, and then lastly, um, we're, you know, the high the V program, um, so the congregate meals have been moved to high V on Wednesdays. And they started out really strong. Um, and we were getting 30, 35, well, it was like 40, and then it was 35. Um, but we're getting new people eating at hy V on Wednesdays, but what we're losing is on Wednesdays at the Senior Center, our county bus would bring between 12 and 14 people over to the Senior Center to eat. And those are folks that need transportation, I think need socialization, um, they're a little more isolated. As of yesterday, we've watched these numbers decline. We only had two people ride the bus over to High V. So what we're seeing is those that drive, those that probably wouldn't want to come to a senior center to eat are going to High V, but our most, I think, socially isolated frail people are not. They don't, so someone wrote me a letter, one of the clients, and he just said, I miss coming to the senior center on Wednesdays. I miss the socialization of the staff, of my other friends. Um, so I did reach out to the county because this is a pilot. And I said, you know, why we are serving and exposing the senior center to a different population of adults that might not want to come and eat at the senior center, we're losing the ability to, ha to capture the folks that really need that socialization and want to come to the senior center. So could we look at a hybrid model where we still offer congregate meals at hy V, but maybe the transportation piece isn't offered? Because that's what we thought. We thought, oh, people would go to High V. They maybe will capture more people that don't have transportation, and you know they'll get on the bus and go to High V. That doesn't seem to be happening. We're losing our bus riders. They're staying home. Another daughter called, and and her mom has some cognitive difficulties, and she said it's just, it's just not fun for her to go to High V. We actually had to call another family because um, this client has more cognitive issues and was sort of wandering a bit. And we don't have the staff to follow people around at the grocery store. Um, we're at the senior center, we can keep our eyes. I mean, we have, I, I will admit, we've lost a few, but Sid, there's a lot of eyes around. And so, you know, city staff will bring them back or we know, you know, where they go. But at High V, you get lost in aisle number 27. We don't know where you are. So, so mm -hmm. anyway, we're seeing, we're seeing um, some challenges with that program. So. Um, the county is very open to talking to us about possibly a hybrid model, um, and so we'll see where that goes. For that hybrid model, so would that be the, um, the congregate meal bus people would still come here for congregate meals? Yes. And then, but we would still have 
high V open for people who can get there on their own. Right. So okay. the caterer still comes here on Wednesdays because we still have to send out home delivered meals. So it's not like they're making a special trip here. The van comes from Consolidated, gives us all the food we need. We pack it up and we send it all home to the home delivered meal clients. You know, I said, why can't we just order those extra 14 meals for the congregate? Ruth, you're going to have to come back to work then. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> so anyway, so um, I was happy that they were open to having that discussion. So um, we'll see where that goes. Uh, one other thing, can you address the, uh, I don't believe the Wednesday high V is functional right now. Is that correct? No, I'm not. You know, somebody else said that too. No, the last Wednesday of the month, high V is closing down for some remodeling or the, maybe that last week. But so that will only affect our congregate meal there the last Wednesday of the month. So they are open because we had a client come in yesterday that said, oh, I thought I was going to eat here today because hy vs closed. No, hy vs not closed. They're just doing some slight remodeling. I think they might rename the Marketplace Grill or something. Um, and so they're going to just do some little upgrades to the restaurant the last week of September. Okay. Okay, cause, you know, I work in uh, a kitchen, yeah. and several of the people Oh, it was. They me, said it was the Tuesday people. <laughs> yeah, the Tuesday people. Anyway, <laughs> they were asking me, where's the menu for high V? Uh -huh. I don't know, see the menu. And uh, I, I was wondering myself, so I asked him. Okay. Apparently, the, there is no menu because they weren't serving on. Oh, on, interesting, yeah, no. I, I also heard that the, the whole kitchen was shut down for the rest of the month. I don't know. No. <laughs> no? Thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. Well, now I know where the rumor started, Jim. They're like, it was someone on Tuesday. That's Jim working in the kitchen. So, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, um, we, did, you know, we didn't know the dates by the time the newsletter came out, so we weren't able to publish it. They told us after. Um, but, so, anyway, hy -V is open um, for my meal, my way, every Wednesday, except I think it's the 29th. Um, that's the last Wednesday. So, Got it. And no new menu. Um, we, yeah, we can get them a menu, though. No. And the menus are at hy V. so, okay. All right. Okay. Okay, any further questions for Jill? Okay. I got a couple more things I want to talk to you guys about, um, and I am going to share my screen again. Let's see. Sorry that, let's see. Andrew... Okay, so you guys know that I am, um, it's budget time, and you're going to see in the budget request a social work position. Um, this is something that we've talked about for a few years since Town of Madison was being annexed. Um, I know that this is a hard, and Dave, I'm sure, can um, attest to this, it's going to be a hard budget cycle because there's a lot of departments that are looking at more employees. Um, for this next calendar year and moving forward. We've talked a little bit about um, the increase in the senior housing coming down the pike, and those are just the facts. We will have 400 plus new senior housing units between you know, late mid-summer 2022 into 23, um, and that's a lot of new people. We're seeing a huge increase of clients from the High Line, and our case management program is just really um, exploding right now. So I, I, the census data is out, and I was just curious to see where, we, where Fitchburg landed. And so um, what's up on your screen here is um, some of the data that I came up with um, from looking at the census data. I didn't come up with it. It was on the, on the, <laughs> it was on the U.S. Census <laughs> website, yeah. Um, as you can see, they've got Fitchburg at 30,000. Um, our older adults over 65 are almost at 4,000. So we serve for case management, for us to get our funding, that number actually is 60 and over. We, we serve 60 and over. So there's, there's a segment of the population that is not reflected in this number. For our senior center, we serve 50 and over. So we might do some case management for those over 50. We just can't report that case management to the county. So our county funding is only looking at 60 and over, okay? Um, so I just did a little survey of the surrounding areas. Um, and as you can see, 
Um, Fitchburg is pretty darn high, right behind Sun Prairie. And then you have Middleton next at 3,100 and so on and so on. Um, and then what I looked at was how many social workers um, these corresponding communities had. And so next to this, um, on the, the text graph, most of them have two social workers, just like us, two full-time. Um, Is there something else with the graph? Um, I don't, that's as big as I can get it, Andrew. Is that right? Yeah, and I can, I can forward you this document as well. Um, and this will be in the budget packet too. So then I started looking at, okay, as you can see, now looking at the bar graph, you know, Fitchburg is pretty high with their older adult population. And again, none of these numbers include 60 and over for any of the, the municipalities or towns that are reflected here. But you're seeing that um, McFarland has a population of 1,400 older adults and they have two full-time social workers. Fitchburg has 3,900 older adults and two social workers. Middleton is 31 with two social workers. Oregon Senior Center has 1,258 older adults and two full-time social workers. So, so I started to you know, realize here that um, Fitchburg is a little bit behind in terms of how many hours we allocate to our social work program compared to surrounding communities. Um, I'm not saying that the city isn't generous in, in helping us um, fund these positions, but we are gaining more um, monies every year from the county to promote this program. So, so this is some of the background of the information that I'll be presenting at the, at the city council. There's been an idea that I floated around. Oh, go ahead, Ruth. What's the increase of older adults or, or gender population? I don't know how you have it delineated uh, when South Madison annexes. Thank you. That, this does not include South Madison. And I want to say it's, you know, I know, I mean, for sure there's 60 housing units in the senior novations commons. So we've got 60 there. I'm working with um, New Bridge Madison to try to um, understand how many clients they're serving. It's hard because we don't take on all of town of Madison. So I, I need right. the, the census tracks in the blocks and I don't have that yet. I would say maybe underestimating a little bit, maybe we're gonna take on maybe another 200. And that's with the senior novations, like clients. You know, uh -huh. there might be older adults that don't, you know, but, uh, but I think with, you know, 60 for sure because of that apartment complex. And that's assuming those are all just one one person per apartment, not not a couple. And what is your timeline for the annex? So the um, town of Madison annexation is in October of 2022. No, not this year, next year. So does that answer your question? Ruth? Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, so anyway, this idea that um, I'm, I'm floating around right now and, and Dave might be hearing this for the first time probably. I did talk to finance and the city administrator so I've done some research, and this is, this is an idea that I've thought about for a while. You know, ever since, not ever since, but for a while we've been seeing um, defund the police department. You know, let's defund in all of, all of the, the issues that surrounded, you know, what's been going on in our world, in our country. Um, I started doing a little research about social workers and how those can benefit a police department. And I looked around surrounding communities as well because you are starting to see a trend of social workers being embedded in police departments to help them deal with a lot of things that they're not trained to deal with. You know, the police department, and we work with them very closely, they're getting calls about everything. You know, they're not trained for everything. They're not social workers. So um, looking at towns around Wisconsin, um, Janesville, Delavan, Whitewater, Eau Claire, all have social workers embedded in their police departments. So um, I, I floated the idea by the administrator and the finance director, and then I floated it by the pl interim police chief. What if in 2022, we presented a shared position? We do a part-time position as a senior center social worker, and then this social worker allocates 20 hours to assist the police. So, you know, I don't have a ton of details. I'm meeting with the police again um, on Monday to talk about what their needs are and how that might look. But my vision 
would be that this social worker is housed at the senior center. This social worker has access to our two social workers who have, you know, probably almost 40 years of experience just with the city. Amy's been here almost 20 and Sarah probably 15. You know, and it's not like we just work with older adults. We're working with families that are raising grandchildren. We're working with people under 60. We're working with people with mental illness. We know how to connect people to all of these wonderful services in Dane County. So we would house this position and then we would share 20 hours with the police department. I feel like at this time, maybe it wouldn't be like an on-demand, oh, a call came in and we need, a, we need a social worker to go with us. It's gonna be more of a, a follow-up. You know, maybe it's a domestic abuse and maybe the wife needs or the husband needs services. Maybe it's those follow-ups to say, our community cares about you and we're gonna show you that by kind of following up. The police, they do have a CIT program, like crisis intervention team that we try to work with, but they don't have any time. They don't have the time to do what needs to be done. So, so my thought is that for the police, it would be a great way to pilot embedding a social worker in their agency, in their department. We could change it up, they could see what it looks like, and then maybe in 2023, they find their own full-time social worker, or not, because it's, it doesn't work for our city. Um, so, so this is just a thought. My thoughts are never in time, like I should have been thinking about this at the beginning of the year. Um, the Department of Justice does have a lot of grant funding available for these kind of programs, but I think we're gonna miss those deadlines, um, and we have missed some of those deadlines. So, um, you know, I, again, I'm gonna meet with the police department. They might have more insight on grants that would fund positions like this for 2022. But my plea would be for the city to fund this position for 2022 and we, maybe the police department, look for grants for the following year. So again, this is just coming out now. <laughs> um, not, I haven't floated it between or to a lot of folks, um, but that's what I'm looking at. Any questions? <laughs>
Um, today, I think we're picking up 12 people. Right now, we have 15 for Friday. About 75% of those people live in Zone 1, so north of Lacey, um, west of Fish Hatchery. And we're talking all the way over across Verona Road, though. So we're not talking just, oh, McKee Park, and we'll pick up everybody at the apartments. We're talking off of Williamsburg Way, New Fountains Apartments. Um, I think we have one or two, we have no three in zone four. And right now we don't have anybody we're picking up in these lower zones south of Lacey, which is kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, this is how the provider is now doing it. They're giving us timelines. So if you live in zone four, um, which we have two exercisers that live in zone four who are no longer able to get here until after the class is over because they go to zone one first and pick up everybody. So if you're picking up 11 people in zone one and you're going all the way across Verona Road and trying to come back, um, by the time they get to zone four, it's almost, I don't know, 11, 15, 11 o'clock, and this client no longer can get here for exercise anymore. Um, so just an example of somebody that is isolated, that doesn't have transportation, um, can get here for lunch at about 11.30 and then gets to go home at 12.30. They, they don't get to enjoy any other things at the senior center. Zone one people, most of those folks were trying to get here for an exercise program or anything else going on. Um, so it's really just, you know, it's just a crapshoot where you live, how many people are on the bus. So, so anyway, this is a nice visual of kind of how the provider is trying to accommodate riders and by giving them time zones. But again, it just really goes back to if you can't drive, you, then the only thing you can do here is eat, um, which, you know, that's okay. Um, but, you know, it's not ideal when you look at the investment that the city is making in our department and I think all of the great programs and services that we offer and that not everybody can take advantage. So, so anyway, um, trying to keep this on the forefront and um, Dave and I have talked about it, Gabriella and I have talked about it and just looking at some more ways that we can get people moving around the city a little bit better. So, so this will just be kind of talked about more and more as we move forward, but I just kind of wanted to share that with you. Um, and I'm gonna sit in on a transportation meeting tonight to, that the city is hosting um, with Madison Metro. You know, if we had Madison Metro coming down in a regular route, not a commuter route, as far as Lacey Road, I would say over 50% of our riders in zone one could qualify for Metro Plus, which means Metro Plus would bring them down to the senior center. Oh. It's an expensive option because it would have to be a, a fixed route and that's expensive. Um, so anyway, just re-looking at some of the options that the city has looked at in the past, um, more fixed routes, I pulled out some, some information about buying a bus, which you can get a lot of grant money to buy a bus. You know, it's just who's gonna drive it, who's gonna insure it, who's gonna maintain it. Um, and then, you know, maybe talking to some developers about kicking in like a park dedication fee, but it would be a senior housing transportation fee. If you're gonna build senior housing, maybe you kick in. Um, so we're working on that angle too, so. So anyway, just wanted to keep that um, in the fronts of your minds as well. And I think that's it. Okay, thank you, Jill. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Are there any announcements uh, from anybody? Our next meeting will be uh, Thursday, October 14th. Um, do I hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good week.